Good morning to all of you. I Shweta Singh welcome all of you on the occasion of international webinar. Wesley College of Education was established with a certain vision and mission, and we are achieving our objective by imparting quality education under the guidance of Secretary Sir Mr. Avinash Kumar Said. Wesley College of Education. is organizing an international webinar on application of ICT for effective teaching and learning it gives me a great pleasure to welcome the esteem chief patron mr avinash kumar said secretary wesley college of education esteem patron mr manish kumar sapsime chairman wesley college of education esteem patron dr sanjita kumari ma'am Deputy Director, Wesley College of Education, esteemed convener speaker, Professor Dr. B. C. Swain Sir, Principal, Wesley College of Education, the esteemed keynote speaker, Professor C. B. Sharma, School of Education, IGNU, New Delhi, and an honourable speaker, Professor Ismail Jain, Malaysia Teacher Institute of Education. Now put your hands together to invite the East Team Secretary Avinash Sir, East Team Chairman Manish Sir, East Team Deputy Director Sanjita Ma'am, and East Team Principal Swain Sir to please come up on the stage for lighting the lamps to inaugurate international webinar. Please, Sanjita Ma'am, please come. Please, Avinash Sir. Deputy Director, Wesley College of Education, to please welcome on the stage and welcome our honourable dignitaries and eminent speakers with welcome speech and commemorate the program. Welcome, ma'am. Welcome, Sanjita, ma'am. Am I audible? Neeraj, am I audible? Ah, uh, thank you, Sita. Good morning to everyone taking part in this international webinar. On behalf of Ridley College of Education, I take the pleasure of welcoming all our esteemed dignitaries to our international webinar on the application of ICT for effective. in learning and teaching the honorable chief patron mr avinash kumar said the honorable chief patron mr manish kapshi me chairman ridgely college of education our honorable 
keynote speaker, Professor C.B. Sharma, Professor, the School of Education, IGNO, New Delhi. Honorable Speaker, Dr. Snail Jain, Professor, Institute of Teacher Education, Malaysia. I welcome you all to this international webinar. I also welcome all the learned speakers, teacher educators, and pupil teachers participating in today's webinar from different parts of the globe. Their participation will certainly make this international webinar a grand success. Application of ICT in teaching and learning process has changed the total scenario of teaching and learning. ICT transformed the whole teaching learning processes, leading to paradigm shifts in both content and teaching methodology. ICT integration in the field of education has impacted usually in improving the quality of education. Teaching and learning process of this is not limited within the classroom's boundaries. It is widely believed that ICT integration will help us in making education more accessible and affordable. Increasing role of ICT will make education more democratic. This is improving the quality education services available to even students sitting in part slum remotest corners of the country. ICT are making major differences in the teaching approaches and ways students and learning. Once again, I extend my hearty welcome to one and all associated with this international webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am, for gracing us with your enthusiastic speech. And now I would like to proceed and request Honorable Professor Dr. Vaishnav Charan Swain, Principal, Wisley College of Education, to please come upon the stage and convey your speech. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Shita. Very Good morning to all of you. Esteemed the Chief Pattern, the Abhinash Kumar Shet, Secretary Grigid College of Education, esteemed the Chairman, Mr. Manish Kumar Kapsine, Honorable Deputy Director, Dr. Sanjita Kumari, our Honorable Keynote Speaker, Professor Sibhi Sharma, Honorable Professor Speaker, Professor Ismail Jain, and participants participants linked with us from India and abroad. I, on behalf of the organizing committee of this international webinar on application of ICT for effective learning and teaching, welcome you all to our midst. Vigil College of Education is an institute of repute established under able guidance of Mr. Avinash Kumar Seth and Mr. Manish Kumar Kapsin, which is imparting quality teachers education since 2009. We are fortunate enough to have Honorable Professor Siddhi Sharma, the former chairman, NI, NIOS, Professor of the School of Education, IGNO, as the keynote speaker for this international webinar. Professor Sharma, a brilliant scholar of and academician, has served the open distance learning system for more than a decade. He obtained a doctoral degree as Commonwealth Scholar from the University of Hall, UK. He obtained his master's and MPhil degree from the Jawaharlal Nehru University. New Delhi, he has reached on television research on television and multimedia in education for MPhil and PhD respectively. Professor Sharma has also conducted external funded systematic research on media research 
At present, he is professor at the School of uh, Education, Igno, New Delhi. His presence in this international webinar will certainly add a very purposeful flavor to the discussion. We feel it a privilege to have him in our midst of the international webinar. Thank you, sir, for being with us today. Honorable Speaker, Professor Ismail Mahmoud Jain, former, former professor of Malaysia Teachers Institute of Education, Director, Dynamic Global Vision, Director and Founder, Project CIDS, first holder of a Malaysia Special Excellent Teachers Award, former Senior Committee of Malaysia Teacher Competency Board, former Malaysia Keyboard Personnel in Education Technology, Wall of Fame Award from University of Saint Malaysia. We feel it a privilege to have him in our miss for the international webinar. Thank you so much for your gracious presence. Namaskar. Thank you, sir. Indeed, there is no point in denying that it is the sheer hard work and dedication of our respected principals that we are gathered here on this online platform to carry on international webinars. We are really very thankful to you, sir. Now I would like to proceed the webinar. Professor Ismail is very friendly in nature and first holder of Malaysia Special Excellent Teacher. Now I would like to request our honorable eminent speaker, Professor Ismail Zain, Teacher Institute of Education Malaysia, to give their speech. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you very much. I hope uh, I'm audible. Okay. Is my voice clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. A very uh, pleasant day to everyone, uh, the honorable chairperson, uh, the uh, honorable secretary of uh, the honorable deputy director of uh, JC. The Honorable Principal of University College and also the Honorable Keynote Speaker, Professor C.B. Sharma, and also to all the participant teachers, student teachers, and participants of this seminar. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, congratulate the organizing committee uh, for being able to uh, organize uh, this uh, uh, webinar. I know it's not very easy to do it, and, uh, and uh, with your cooperation, all of you, okay, from the principal, the director, until all of you, the teachers, lecturers, we can make a success. Hopefully, today we can share English, uh, out of our seminar today. And also, I would like to express my gratitude uh, to the organizing community for having to uh, invite me. Uh, to share with you all. I'm very glad to share with you all. And I've been to India uh, last uh, two years. I met Professor Shwen before at the Rajendra College and also a few universities. A very, uh, very interesting. I, I, I really like uh, the culture and also the way uh, your interest in, in education. So congratulations to all. And also, um, in a short while, I have the president of our NGO bodies, uh, that is uh, the uh, Para um, Cyber Education uh, Community, uh, the Honorable Dato Norma Hanum. Uh, she uh, will be shortly because in the morning she has some uh, uh, function, 
the CSR function about uh, 40 kilometers from here. She's very active, actively involved in all the education, uh, community works for parents, for teachers, and also uh, for um, community. Uh, she's already 75. She's a former teacher and she's still active. So I would like to meet, meet her afterward. If she's free, if she's able, maybe we can also get some uh, points uh, and share a few words from her uh, later. Well, um, today we come to our um, main uh, core business that is uh, uh, the, 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 the presentation that I'm going to give you. But first of all, I would like to apologize if during my uh, presentation there is certain thing that you are not agreed or certain thing that touch your feeling. I'm really apologize uh, for that. But merely, sincerely, I've given a job, I'm given a task to deliver. I'll try to do uh, my best of it. So I will put my presentation. Uh, and uh, if it's not uh, visual, uh, visible, you just let me know. So I will share my presentation to you. Okay, there you are. I think you can see that, right? Can someone respond? Is it okay? Can you see it all? Okay, I think you should, uh, you have really uh, able to see my presentation. Well, um, the themes of this webinar is the application of uh, ICT for effective learning and teaching. By the way, I. I'm already uh, retired from the teacher uh, education quite some time, about eight years. I'm now uh, a freelance. I'm an instructional designer consultant, and I did work, give works, uh, give um, talks to all over uh, the world. Uh, so I'm, I, I'm, I'm the tech ex teacher for, for the past, um, you know, uh, 10 years ago. Okay, so the application of ICT for effective learning and teaching is very interesting um, uh, themes, and uh, it is what we are we are doing now is toward realizing the twenty first century education because we cannot run away whatever uh, learning we are doing now we are doing it on the relevant teaching and learning environment, current teaching and learning environment, that is 21st century education. Let us give, uh, we try to do some reflection, and I have chosen a few quotes for us to think about that is relevant to our topic today. Okay, first, let us see, and I'm sure you are able to read it. We are talking about learning. So this guy, John Holt, said that learning is not the product of teaching. Okay, it may surprise you. you know? Learning is not the product of teaching. So what is learning there? That he says that learning is the product of the activity of learners. So we are saying that learner-centered, we not uh, going to have a teacher-centered. Those are uh, a, a, a way of teaching that is passed for the 30 years ago. Now we are learner-centered, meaning that the particip participation of learners in the activity, meaning that teacher is not sole teacher is teaching the class, but he is what we call facilitator. He facilitated, facilitate learning, meaning that in the classroom, teacher acts as facilitator and learner is the learner and there is an activity so that there is an interaction between teacher and learner. That is learning. If teachers teaching alone in the uh, 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 on the stage, so it's not it's not learning. It's just teaching. So that is one uh, uh, philosophy of effective learning. Secondly, we look at technology because we are talking about technology. What is the role of technology? Well, you can see here by Josh Taurus, technology will not replace great teachers. So that is very important. Technology, we know that is important, but it will not replace the great teachers. 
That means the great teachers, the excellent teachers, we still need the excellent teachers instead of just technology alone. But technology in the hands of great teachers can be transformational. Meaning that, you know, if you have a proper technology and is used by an excellent teacher, then it can be a value added. That is a transformation of education in the 21st century education. So you can see both now, they are equally important. It doesn't mean that one technology is in our hand, we do not have a teacher to play the role. No, teacher still play the roles. Teacher is still the main thing. But technology is the tool to help the teachers for the effective learning. These are the two um, quotes that uh, you have many, many other quotes, but these are the two main quotes. Now you look at another great man talk about technology. Everybody knows him. He is a Bill Gates, the founder and father of the technology. And what he say? He says that technology is just a tool. Well, there you are. In terms of getting the kids working together and motivating them, the teacher is the most important. You can uh, read that. You can see. Okay. Technology is tool in terms of work, getting the kids working together, meaning there is an activity. Either you want to motivate it, you want to impart knowledge. Teacher is the most important. You can see it complement here, the second. And here, same thing. So it summarized. Both. Okay. So now, when you ask me how the role of technology, so this is how you summarize it. Well, based on these three quotes, I have summarized another quote. It's my own. I say that for effective learning, the collaborative works of human potential. We are human. We have all the potential. We have our eyes. We have our brain. We have our skill. These are all the potential. If we can collaborate the works of human potential and pedagogical enrichment, you must have pedagogy. In, for students, we say pedagogy. For adult, we say andragogy. You know, for now, the uh, home-based learning, we call it cybergogy. So there are many gogies there. Yeah? But it means that it's a method, it's an approach. So if we can combine of our potential and also the pedagogical, the approaches, with the infusion of current technology advancement in educating learners. That is effective learning. That means human, yeah, everybody is a human, and the pedagogy and technology. I'm putting one pedagogy because people always forget about pedagogy. And some teachers say that pedagogy is meant for student teachers who are BS students. No. Pedagogy is not only for BS students to learn, but when you are a teacher, when you are a qualified teacher, you need the pedagogy to teach. You need method, approaches to teach. It's not just going to the class and then start teaching. No, no way. That it won't be effective. So must be very rich in pedagogy. So this is my summary of these uh, three uh, terms. Now, you want to look at the domains of effective learning and teaching. And bear in mind what I said to you just now. Bear in mind of this. And what are the domains for effective learning and teaching? Because we are talking about effective learning. First, we have, must have three domains here. First, you must have technology. Yes. It can be anything. You know, it's not only computers. Anything. You can have a model. You can have a chart. It doesn't matter. As long as it is a sort of a technique and approach to make the student understand of your topics. Secondly, we have pedagogy. I mean, approach. You want to have um, class um, um, discussion or you want to have uh, interaction, small group interaction. You want to have a hybrid learning, whatever, whatever. You must have a very rich pedagogy. Otherwise, you won't be able to have an effective learning. And another one is the content. That is the knowledge. You know, you can get from your books. Everything is your subject content. So these are the component, the domain that will form very effective learning here. The collaboration of a human, 
this is human yeah? and also the pedagogy here and also the technology here this combination actually this domain has been put up by misha and kohler 2006 we call it tpex model technological knowledge pedagogical knowledge and content knowledge so the effective learning it come under this triangle the combination of three this is we call it tpex you must have technological pedagogical and content knowledge this is very important you can just type TPEC model in the net. You can see that. And I'm sure also be at students will learn about TPEX model for effective teaching and learning. If you have only one, you have only one technology, you are good in technology, it won't still, it won't uh, have an effective learning. If you have good pedagogy, you don't have technology, it doesn't work. If you have a good content, but you don't have the technology, it's the same thing. But you must have three, all these things. These are challenges for teachers, educators. Now we look at how is the, 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 the requirement for the effective learning and teaching? What are the requirements, the needs? First, the teacher must have a professional development. Now you're in a college, okay, well, you have all the knowledge there. But when you are in the classroom, the development in every aspect of education should be must be on because uh, we call it a long life education that means that you must have you must always have your professional development in your school either it is an in-house training in-house seminar or you attending all these uh, conferences or you attend the short courses organized by your school your district level left national level even at the national level or the district level or the state level you must because as a teacher you must know you must have skill in every part of your discipline because you are a teacher you must know you must know psychology you must know sociology you must know all the current development that's the need why you need that because the outcome is that you want to establish your student, your learners to be globally competitive learners. Meaning that they are able to adopt and adapt in their future career and also future living, especially in the era of RR 4.0, Industrial Revolution 4.0. You have smart society. You have a lot more things in, in future. They must survive not only for the career for the future living it's not only knowledge but you have to develop their character you have to develop your skill so that they will be establishing globally competitive learner for their living so you must get that, that because teacher is the sole the important figure to shape up your student so what you have here you need something here you need a, a framework here so the framework here is what we call it the four-dimensional education. If you can type four-dimensional education, center for curriculum design, these are the framework, the effective learning teaching framework that is the learner's learning competencies. Meaning that the students should have these competencies embedded or integrated in the teaching. What are they? First, knowledge. Uh, this is all the, your subject knowledge. But it doesn't mean stop here. You must have the skill, the creativity, the critical thinking. I know that I'm sure you're familiar. But another here is character. You know, in every country in, in the world, you want to be your student to be um, uh, um, morally upgraded. You want them to be well-disciplined. You want to be a very noble person. So this is character. You need a character. And another one here is metacognition. The fourth meta connection is involved all meta connection actually very simple it is about cognitive uh, uh, flow that is how you are able to do reflection how you are going to think because when you reach certain age you have all this but your thinking the way how you think is very important the development of the mind is very important so there are the four aspects to be embedded in your teaching and learning so that the outcome here, the student will be, you know, not only excellent in their subject, but excellent in their life and also their future career. Now, actually, I have made um, a, 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 a model 
I have uh, I've, in shortly I will show you uh, I will show you how to plan a lesson because many uh, teachers asking me how to plan lesson so actually you need to plan you know uh, like this one yeah when you have this you need to plan you need to plan your lesson so how are you going to plan it most of us will plan using your you know you know your books or some of them we use google uh, uh, you know uh, words you know to write but i have developed uh, a, a software and application how to embed all this into your teaching and learning so actually i contacted this guy he's a center for Korean design and he's a his name is Chow Fedel. he's the founder of this and i've bought the book the 4d and finally we have a collaboration where he's very happy to help me and giving all the inputs uh, about the model because he has the the uh, framework i have the model so he put it here the four edu that's for damage education and cids i name it as a collaborative instructional design system which i will show you shortly will guide the user especially the teacher in instructional planning i mean in lesson plan redesign reconstructing and re-engineering academic direction visualizing the current education landscape toward preparing learners future career path that is relevant to the fourth industrial revolution so i have a good relation with this uh, curriculum this uh, this body based in us um and um um what i'm doing my work has been supported by by uh, this organization a very big organization okay now we we try to look on about the application of ict in education first this is the categories i put it into a categories how the survey underway categories one i name it as conventional application we have two here one is we call it traditional at the time it's non-electronic Meaning that you have like um, charts, you have that mobile, you have a um, uh, model, uh, but uh, it's still being used. It doesn't mean that when I say traditional, you are not using it. No, you must, you have, or you are able to use it whenever applicable. Sometimes this is more important to the children. You can see what type of children they are. You know, like kindergarten, sometimes they ask, they are uh, uh, very um, straightforward. They want to touch it. Uh, they want to see it. So, just through the video is not enough, but through a life or the real uh, object. And then at the time also, we have a new media. When I talk a new media, it's not now. A new media in 1960s under the conventional application. That is, you have OHP, you have slide. you know, those are the things that uh, we call it a new media at the time. That's electronic thing. So that is under one category. Of course, um, you know, the slide and OHP, we're not using it now. No more. We are not using it anymore. And the second category is um, software applications. You know, we have sort of web-based application. Nowadays, a lot of web-based application. You can identify that. You have social media application. So remember when you are during the epidemics, you know, the COVID, uh, most of this uh, uh, symbol, you have been using it. At least your WhatsApp, your email, your Telegram, your Instagram, and so on and so forth we can use it as an application uh, for the students of course you have of e-learning platform and so on and so forth and then you have another one another group we call it artificial intelligence application you have augmented reality you have virtual reality you have 7g hologram uh, and so on and so forth so this is more advanced uh, in coming certain countries have used it uh, but in certain countries uh, we are in, in very short time we are going to use it uh, uh, very soon so these are the three uh, main categories of the ICT okay next we go the role of ICT in learning areas in learning and teaching first is that learning and teaching resources it role as a learning and teaching resources that is solution for deeper understanding of the topic you can use anything that you want you know you can use pictures you can use um, um, animation from youtube you can use uh, worksheet uh, uh, whatever a website link to website quizzes anything because there are so many things the only way is that you are you try to explore 
certain things are free but certain things you have to you know subscribe that's his pen or you but most important that you see it and the most important is that it will help the understanding of the topic so you must have the pedagogy you cannot just simply play the video and let the student watch no just now we have already say that you know the combination yeah, the collaborative work of the human as well as technology still uh, teacher play a very important role the resources or the technology is just a tool that's what um, bill gates says secondly we have all the learning and teaching platforms you know like home based learning we have also blended learning i mean the combination of face to face and during classroom and then they go back the children the teacher uh, they go back to school in weekends you have the platform uh, the platform for example the google google um, classroom platform you have us uh, at modo you have uh, many other platform models you know you have all, all this online learning platform and last time we have already used it uh, during the home based uh, learning this is another uh, the role of ICT the third role of ICT is that learning and teaching communication channel there is online interaction you know like what we are using now zoom google streamyard you have uh, uh, other than that uh, uh, you have um, you know uh, a lot of things there a lot of a lot of uh, thing. in fact in my um, cids we also have this communicational channel where you can use it either uh, has a blended learning you know uh, last time we use it only because of the covid but now uh, when it's free of covid we can use it for we have to go on uh, don't stop there we have go on but we use it as a blended learning meaning that uh, in weekends once in a while you can have some chit chat with the student or sort of uh, extra class for the student at home if if they are available whether you can use handphones whatever if they are available and fourthly this is um a very uh, sometimes people forget about this and this is what I told you learning teaching for instructional planning this is what i'm doing it now you know it's not just a template but it's a system which i will show you just just a bit I'll show you just a short while so there is creating of online lesson plan uh, we call it cids collaborative instructional design plan uh, it's a collaborative instructional design which um if you are interested your professor uh, uh, swan interested we can have it as a, a small project for your college uh, later i will show you so these are the role you know as a resources as a platform of a learning a channel and so for instruction and all of these you must have your attributes there are all the uh, approaches method to use it not just use like that you have a lot of method uh, to to use the teaching and learning okay how to use i see it effectively now first you must analyze your subject content remember it's a combination you know your topics of teaching and then you must also analyze your learning needs what they needs to know you know uh do you needs to know the process or is it the concept or is it the content so how because that will determine what type of media you want to use it if it is a process then you can show a video but if it is just like um uh, uh, a mapping you can use your mind mapping you know and also you must know your learners attribute this is under psychology uh, i'm sure you have uh, you have heard about learning style you have do, uh, you have heard about multiple intelligences all these are the learners attribute that determine for example if the student is more visual there's a learning style VARK, visual auditory uh, read and uh, T, uh, a K is kinesthetic. If the teachers and uh, the students are more visual, then you can be sure. But if the students are more kinesthetic, kinesthetic means they are, you know, using their, their movement. So maybe you can do sort of a play, a role play. So that will help the children to learn. Otherwise, the student will be very bored. So as what I say, if you use technology also, you must have your uh, a pedagogy and your psychological um, um, information from your student. Secondly, you identify the resources. So once you know this, you identify your resources. What resources they want to use? You identify the platforms. 
the type of media and also the application procedure. So this is another uh, second process. First, identify all these topic learners. This topic knowledge. This is a knowledge. This is learners, and this is the resources the ones you know. And thirdly, you must set your pedagogical approaches, and you integrate in the lesson. Good. Uh, you have chosen that you integrate in a lesson and finally you will plan and you deliver. So these are the steps that I've already put in in my uh, model in the system. I'll show you shortly. These are the steps. Next, uh, this is the model. We call it Collaborative Instructional Design System, CIDS, that is integrating and infusing elements of current education needs, it's 21st century learning, collaboratively in the interactive online instructional planning activity application based lesson plan. So actually it's an innovative 21st century classroom based instructional, instructional design model. I will show you uh, shortly. I'm sure um, in the BED uh, class you learn about instructional design. I'm sure because it's part of the technology uh, theoretical background. And you will see this after I will show you. Is a system when you come in this is a unique thing you won't see the template most of the lesson plan you see the template that's the person no you can see the component the model we call it uh, ac model a s i e you can type in your internet you can see ac model is e stand for knowledge this is knowledge as i showed just now this is the skill character and mental learning this is all from the uh, four dimensional learning these are the two things then you will uh, plan your lesson according to this. And finally, you're going to implement in the classroom. And finally, you have sort of revision, you know, the evaluation. And this, the center here, actually, is the worksheet. Once you, uh, all you key in, all your information here, it will come into sort of a lesson plan here. And here are the uh, 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 menu here. Right now, we have a Malay English. Uh, we are going to Brunei, we are Arab, Arab, and hopefully, if we go to India, if you are interested, we can also uh, change it into also India. We can add uh, India or Hindi. I'm sure you have uh, <coughs> Hindi. You can put a Hindi language. But to write inside here, you can use any language from your um, um, text, yeah? from your font. You can use it. So, if you can see here, bear in mind again, you know, so this is knowledge, the character, and this is my model. You can see here how all these we put it in here so that when you plan your lesson plan, you are fulfilling all the requirement of the 21st century education and hopefully it will become effective learning. And this is a fun example, a teacher, English teacher in Malaysia. You know, in Malaysia, one my full state, about 38,000 teachers are using it, and it goes very in the state. And we are going to Brunei, another uh, country, next week for one week uh, to give a course for them. It is the schools, you know, and you see, can you can see here is a template here, some type of instructional uh, media skill, the component we are talking just now. If you see here, the blue thing here is a lot of things, but you know, you are not going to write it. Actually, we we can. You know, key in here. In all your syllabus will be here. You just click and write. But for the activities, you have to read, read your own. So this example, your activities. You know, like step one, step two. You can integrate all your videos here. No problem here. And then your principal can or headmaster can uh, verify. And me as a observer, I will uh, again I will verify them with my digital signature. So very powerful. You can use it anywhere you like. You know, you can share with your friend in different school. Uh, all the administrators from uh, uh, from state from from uh, other state will able able to uh, assess it. This is another we call it community service that that Norma will be shortly here. So she has initiated this. We put it under one another platform and. Uh, uh, you can write anything here. A question. This is we did it during the the the, the, the academic, uh, uh, epidemic because the school uh, school, uh, school closed. We put a question here. The student will be able to interact 
either video or anything. So this is another one. So this is uh, all that I'm going to say um, about the learning. Now, in very short, about two, three minutes, I will demonstrate to you um, the CIDS. And after that, hopefully, uh, Dr. Norma here, maybe she can give one or two uh, uh, her views about uh, our topic today. So let me um, go to another uh, okay hopefully you can see this okay well so this is the uh your, your, the, 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 the web page or the system so when and you enter here, so everything will be here. This introduction page, you know, this is the guy just now talking, Charles Fedel, and all the information are here. And if teacher will be given, this is also a sort of a, a video clips here. And if teacher will be given an ID, for example, if I'm the administrator, I just can come in and this is the introduction page. Now we have version nine you come to here and very interactive. Everything is interactive. I can change it in Malay or English. If I change it, the different language here, I can put it in, in Malay. You can see everything Malay. So if I want to come back by English, everything will be English and I can put it in Arabs or can put it in Hindi. It can be done. It can be done later. So I will show you how fast it is. Let's see. These are all the, the menus, uh, the very easy menus. Let's say this is a most common venue that we use. Let's see. I put it uh, open record is I'm an, I'm the administrator. I can see all the people here. I have now about ten uh, planning, and I have here 27,753 pages, meaning that I have about two hundred and seventy five thousand five hundred and thirty weekly um, plan. And inside here, IPA means instructional pro, uh, instructional uh, uh, instructional uh, planning activities meaning that it's a lesson plan so you have many many so you have you have sort of more than five hundred thousand uh, lesson plan here for august only you know for the two weeks of august see i can just pop in and take one you know let's say if if i want to take english subject i can take um language maybe i can take um, an english subject okay and i search it so i can get it here Maybe I take one person here and open it. So I can see the picture of the, the lady, the teacher here, schools here, all he has prepared here. You know, the learning objective, this only he has to write. The other thing, it just, you know, you select it. All these are syllabus that you can key in there. And then you see, can he's here? I can also put a remarks here. Let's say I say a, a congratulation here, and anything I can write here. And then I just choose a date here automatically it come 20 years and i verified it very fast now my signature signature here and everything is here and you can see her 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 lesson plan here can see that monday let's say take monday lesson plan you can see here all the instructions these are very minimum very minimum let's say if i take another teacher i share with the teacher this one is a very good teacher. Can I take this one? You can see this teacher, 50 over, but good in ICT, you know, because my my program doesn't require to be a very, you know, skillful. No, you have a basic is enough. And I can take one of her uh, here. You can see video is inside there. You know, you can see all the videos are there. You can play it bigger. You can use it in classroom, no problem. You know? And also you can link it, see like live worksheet. Uh, this time you can link it to live worksheet and so forth, so on, so forth. So this one, yeah. Like anymore in Malaysia, it will take to you the website and then the, the, the your, your headmaster, your administrator know what you are doing and the teacher and uh, is it make easier for you to teach in the classroom? So these are the thing and uh, one more i want to show you is uh the final one is from our um, uh, community okay um yes uh, the community here 
this is our community, you know, and uh, when this is Malay, but I'll show you how it works. And we can go to e forum, you know, and we can put something. Let's see if I take this one. This is, is our our community will become like doctors. This is a doctor, this uh, Doctor Siva. So he's our members, and also he'll put some question on it. You know, uh, he put some question on it for the students. Let's see. This is is called um, uh, the ethics of cough and uh, sneeze during the epidemic period. You can put some information here, some video here, you know, uh, or some video here, and the student can interact. So this student will interact. The school children will interact. So this is another platform. Uh, I, I'm also interact with the student. Another platform instead of just uh, you know you're using your handphone, but this uh, uh, you're using only like um, WhatsApp, Telegram, but this is another platform is really included in there. So I think uh, that's it. Um, what uh, already uh, uh, going to say about it. And um, uh, before I, I um, uh, call upon that that took Norma if she's around. Um, you know, this is just to 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 think all of us. You know, uh, I say that uh, fail to implement the implementation the most common failure of mankind you know uh, the government have uh, you know have the implementation a lot of implementation but ask ourselves as a teacher do we implement those implementation so actually the most common failure for mankind is that he failed to implement all the implementation that has been done so uh, before i um uh, hand over to the um uh, our uh, uh, the chairperson, maybe I I'm not sure whether uh, your the Dato uh, is here or not. Uh, Dato Norma, are you here? Dato Norma, are you here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, yes, yes. So I would like to um, introduce to all of you all. So Datuk Norma Hanum, uh, she is uh, actually um, the president of many, many organizations. One of, of it is the Para Cyber Education Community. And um, she has done a lot of uh, community work. She's our, I'm sure this morning she is also busy, just came back from one of the function about 40 kilometers from from our place here she did a lot of work in fact every week she did, uh, in education for students for parents for teachers and also uh, for the public community. so i would like to thank first uh, professor sharma for accepting her to be just a few or two minutes uh, to hear she's an expert um, and she is also uh, a mother of a very successful uh, daughters and also uh, 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 all the, the the grandchildren. You know the the the, uh, the, the daughters are involved uh, has been appointed as um, you know uh, state assemblyman uh, and so she has been appointed as um, uh, you know the honourable. Uh, 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 what do you call it? Um, uh, elected by the Sultan and also by the King. She has received all those honorable things from uh, the Sultan. So maybe she can she can elaborate that and maybe in a few minutes, maybe uh, Latonoma will give her view about IT and education. Okay, Latonoma, I pass to you. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Prashmaya, uh, my good friend, and also a with the with the same organization that is we are doing the education uh, um, in a charity body where we help the students. Um, I mean, even uh, during outside school work, but Dr. Prashmaya is one of our uh, one of my my colleagues who are doing the CIDS, which I think 
he has already explained very clearly just now and i'm glad to uh, to know uh, our clicks from india that is dr chuan then who are the others i cannot see uh, with us today thank you uh, for giving me a chance to say hello to all of you uh, where education is concerned i'm very very interested and then um, i feel honored to be together and being the first to be i mean first time to be together i think i will just listen and try to gain as much knowledge uh, from all of you and of course i agree with um, dr ismail that teachers should be aware of the technology innovation and they should apply in their classroom wherever uh, applicable and the show teachers should play the role in implementing current methods and approach to educate their pupils at the present time and i think what dr prof smile is introducing the cids is one of the uh, program that is uh, what we are trying to do in malaysia among the teachers and among the school children uh, at the moment thank you okay dr omar thank you very much uh, yeah uh, yeah yeah anything else I anything else you want to say uh, i'm proud that dr smile is being uh, prof smile is being chosen as one of uh, uh, of the team where the, we, uh, we are discussing to, uh, today and hopefully we can share more with professor sharma and professor shan for the sake of education and then i wish you all the best and hopefully we can work together wherever we can bring whatever the methods that is uh, being used that is good in india should be shared with us in Russia and also internationally i think that's all for now that is my yeah thank you very much Dato Noma. despite of very busy day busy, she's still able to come and uh, looking at her age of 75 so she's still strong you know, uh, here and there so i think that's it for me thank you very much i hope what i've given uh, to all the teachers uh, something that we shared if anything is uh, means anything i apologize for that and i wish all of you a very good luck and very good uh, 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 help stay safe so that we can meet again so back to mr uh, miss shweta singh i am up to you as you are. thank you very much thank you sir i request you to stay there on the screen thank you sir uh, for your informative speech you have uh, you have said uh, about the role of technology really it is very informative and how to make lesson plan on ict and role of ict in learning teaching in order to establish globally in competitive learners and able to adopt and adapt in their future career and future living and how can we use uh, ICT effectively? We come to know very well from you. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot and thanks for your gracious presence. And now I would like to in request Professor Chandra Bhushan Sarma, an academician par excellence, his in depth understanding of the subject matter and passion of knowledge is best known to his colleagues and students are really fortunate to have him amongst us today. And I would like to invite Professor Chandrabhushan Sarma sir for his valuable speech. Professor C.B. Sarma, you, over to you, you, sir. Thank you so much, Kweta. Can you, I, I can't see my video, but is the video visible? No, sir, it is not visible. Uh, I have... Uh, switched on my video but i don't think the audio is working fine Sveta. yes sir your audio is fine 
I think there is, might be some video, or video but let us not try to see that now. And uh, go ahead uh, with the program. Uh, let me let me just. Sir, your connectivity is poor, sir. CB Sharma, sir. कौन दिखा रहा है लेकिन ना आपको दिख नहीं रहा है। Your video is not visible। No, no, I think the video is not visible. Let us not get bogged down by that. I'll go ahead with the what I have to say. It's not very long. I'll be very brief. सबसे पहले तो मैं I will I will apologize to Mr. Smile if he is still there. From Malaysia because I'll be speaking in Hindi. Uh, I know this is from my place, my home, motherland, the Jharkhand, where we speak Hindi. I think I have all the people who are attending and hearing would uh, best uh, understand me when I speak in Hindi. So, Mr. Smile, uh, I'm, with my apologies, I will I like to address in Hindi. No problems, Professor. Yeah, Carry on. Yeah. I'll generally, be, uh, I'll generally be talking about the national education policy that we have and the government has given to the nation only two years back. We are working on it and um, I know uh, it's, it's a very, very uh, ambitious uh, national policy. So in the light of what uh, Ismail had just said about technology, and its use the national education policy 2020 intends to use technology in a different manner than what we have been doing sabse pehle to aap sabhi ka swagat aur aabhar ki aapne hame bulaya hai rashtriya shiksha niti jo 2020 july ko bharat sarkar ne diya wo hum usi ke paripeksh mein baat karenge aur bahut short mein baat karenge dekhiye ये चौथे साल के बाद एक नई शिक्षा नीति आई और ये शिक्षा नीति पूरे शिक्षा व्यवस्था को ही पलटना चाहती है कैसे पुरानी शिक्षा नीति जो उन्नीस में आई थी वो ऐसे कंप्यूटर साइंटिस्ट बनाने की बात कर रही थी कंप्यूटर की पढ़ाई की बात कर रही थी जिसके माध्यम से हम हाई एंड टेक्नोलॉजी लीडर्स बनाने की बात कर रहे थे तो उन्नीस के शिक्षा नीति का प्रभाव यह हुआ कि हमारे अच्छे विद्यार्थी दुनिया भर में बिखरे गए और वहां बड़ी बड़ी कंपनियों के सीईओ बने भारत को क्या मिला हमने अपने सारे अच्छे विद्यार्थियों को विदेश भेज दिया और वो वहां काम करते हैं ऐसे ही जब आप पुरानी नीतियों को देखें तो आप पाएंगे कि मैकोले का मिनिट्स भारत में अंग्रेजी शिक्षा को बढ़ाना चाहता है और बढ़ा आप देख रहे हैं कि 200 साल बाद हम अंग्रेजी में ही जाति बात करते हैं लेकिन उन बच्चों का क्या उन विद्यार्थियों का क्या जो अंग्रेजी नहीं जानते हैं गांव के दूर दराज के विद्यार्थी जहां अंग्रेजी शिक्षक भी नहीं है और अंग्रेजी की पढ़ाई भी अच्छी नहीं है तो राष्ट्रीय शिक्षा नीति पहली तो ये बात करती है कि हम अपनी मातृभाषा में लोअर प्राइमरी एजुकेशन देंगे क्योंकि बच्चे विद्यालय छोड़ जाते हैं जब उनको कुछ बात समझ में नहीं आती है हम बात कर रहे हैं कि जो बच्चा झारखंड में है वो संथाली में क्यों नहीं पढ़ सकता है मुंडारी में क्यों नहीं पढ़ सकता है हो में क्यों नहीं पढ़ सकता है हम इसकी तैयारी कर रहे हैं और इन भाषाओं में लोअर प्राइमरी इसको ऐसे मत समझिएगा कि पी तक वो इस इन भाषाओं में काम करेगा वो लोअर प्राइमरी में जब आएगा तो वो हिंदी हिंदी के बजाय संथाली में मुंडारी में खड़िया में हो में बात करेगा अपने दोस्तों से और उसी भाषा में उसको पढ़ाएगा भी शिक्षक ताकि वो विद्यालय में रुके जब थोड़ा बड़ा होगा और तीसरी कक्षा में जाएगा तो जो राज्य की मुख्य भाषा है जैसे झारखंड में हिंदी है तो हिंदी में पढ़ाया जाएगा इसका प्रभाव ये होगा कि वो विद्यालय छोड़ेगा नहीं आप सबको मालूम होगा कि लगभग 
तीन सवा तीन करोड़ ऐसे बच्चे हैं जो विद्यालय छोड़ के घरों में बैठे हैं आउट ऑफ स्कूल चिल्ड्रन जिनको हम कहते हैं तो उनको विद्यालय में कैसे रोका जाए ये राष्ट्र का नुकसान है अगर हमारे बच्चे जो गरीब हैं जो गांव और दूर दराज के क्षेत्रों से आते हैं वो अगर विद्यालय में नहीं है विद्यालय छोड़ गए हैं तो ये किसका दोष है हमारी नीतियों का दोष रहा ये उल्टेगा तीसरी बड़ी बात जो कहता है वो ये कि तकनीक का इस्तेमाल हम हाई एंड यूजर बनाने के लिए नहीं करेंगे हम सीईओ बनाने के लिए नहीं करेंगे हम तकनीक का इस्तेमाल करेंगे कि हमारे बच्चों को तकनीक के माध्यम से शिक्षा पहुंचे तो अभी जिसकी बात इस्माइल साहब कर रहे थे ऐसे सॉफ्टवेयर जिसके माध्यम से शहरों में रह रहे शिक्षक गांव के बच्चों को पढ़ाएं मैं इतने दूर बैठा हूं शायद अगर मुझे आप कहते कि आपको आकर के लेक्चर देना होगा तो हम नहीं पहुंच पाते आज आपसे बात इसलिए कर पा रहा हूं क्योंकि ये तकनीक हमारे पास उपलब्ध हुआ है और हम ऐसे ही तकनीक को बढ़ावा देना चाहते हैं तो देखिए एक पूरी नीति बदल रही है हम केवल कंप्यूटर की पढ़ाई इसलिए नहीं कराएंगे कि लोग जाकर के बड़े बड़े देशों में रहें अमीर बने हम इसलिए तकनीक का इस्तेमाल करेंगे ताकि हमारे बच्चे जो गांव में हैं दूर दराज में हैं वो तकनीक के इस्तेमाल से बढ़िया पढ़ाई कर सके आप पाएंगे कि जो अच्छे शिक्षक रांची में रहते हैं वो भी पढ़ा सकते हैं जुमली तिलैया के बच्चों को या दिल्ली में रहते हैं वो भी पढ़ा सकते हैं तो ये सबसे बड़ी बात होगी लेकिन जो दूसरी अच्छी बात और कह रहा है ये कह रही है नीति कि हमारे बच्चे बहुत फिजिकली कमजोर हैं वो अच्छा भोजन नहीं मिलता है कमजोर रहते हैं इसलिए वो जा पढ़ नहीं पाते हैं समझ नहीं पाते हैं दिमाग का इस्तेमाल नहीं कर पाते हैं तो उनको भी हम रोकने के लिए सुबह का नाश्ता देंगे इसका बड़ा प्रभाव पड़ेगा अभी बच्चे चूंकि नहीं कुछ समझते हैं पिछड़ जाते हैं तो माता पिता भी कहते हैं छोड़ दो मत जाओ विद्यालय कुछ समझते नहीं हो सीख नहीं रहे हो सबसे बड़ा जोर है कि जो गरीब जो दूर दराज के इलाके में बच्चे रहते थे उनको रोका जाए उनको अच्छी शिक्षा दी जाए ताकि वो राष्ट्र के निर्माण में भी योगदान दे सके तो आज जो तीन सवा तीन साढ़े तीन करोड़ बच्चे विद्यालय के बाहर हैं वो नहीं रुकेंगे नहीं जाएंगे दूसरी बड़ी बात विद्यालय शिक्षा चूंकि आप शिक्षक शिक्षा के महाविद्यालय हैं तो आपको ये समझ में आएगी बात कि आज जो बच्चा खेल में रुचि रखता है या किसी दूसरे स्किल के सब्जेक्ट में इंटरेस्ट रखता है जैसे कारपेंट्री में जैसे स्पोर्ट्स में जैसे पेंटिंग में जैसे डांस में उनको क्यों मौका नहीं मिले उनको भी मौका मिलना चाहिए कि वो अपने विधा में बेहतर कर सके तो हम लोगों ने जो बदलाव लाया है वो ये कि अब आप फिजिक्स के साथ स्पोर्ट्स को भी एक सब्जेक्ट के तौर पर पढ़ सकते हैं आप केमिस्ट्री के साथ म्यूजिक को भी पढ़ सकते हैं मैथमेटिक्स के साथ एग्रीकल्चर भी पढ़ सकते हैं और उसके लिए भी आपको उतना ही श्रेय मिलेगा उतना ही मार्क्स मिलेंगे जितना कि किसी और सब्जेक्ट तो विषय का जो रोक था कि ये एकेडमिक है ये करिकुलर है ये को करिकुलर है ये एक्स्ट्रा करिकुलर है वो खत्म किया गया है आप अच्छा एनसीसी करते हैं एनसीसी करिए और एनसीसी में ही अच्छे होंगे तो आपको आर्मी में जॉब भी मिलेगा आप अच्छा कैडर भी ज्वाइन करेंगे नौकरी भी मिलेगी तो विषय का भी जो संशय था विषय का जो कमजोरी थी वो भी दूर किया गया है उसके बाद हम लोगों ने जो बड़ा चेंज किया है वो ये है कि परीक्षा जब चाहो तब परीक्षा दो क्यों बोर्ड की परीक्षा एक ही बार हो ये बारी बारी से होना चाहिए इसलिए ये किया गया है कि बोर्ड की परीक्षा एक बार नहीं दो बार और हर समय होता रहे हर महीने होता रहे तो बच्चा जब चाहे अपनी अपना अपने को एग्जामिनेशन में बैठाए और अपना डिग्री ले चलिए अच्छा लग रहा है अब आप लोग सब दिख रहे हैं स्वयं जी भी दिख रहे हैं मेरा कैमरा नहीं चल रहा है इसलिए मैं नहीं देख पा रहा हूं लेकिन अच्छा लग रहा है आप सबको देख के कभी मैं आऊंगा मैं रांची आता रहता हूं तो आपके यहां पहुंचूंगा मैं संक्षेप में केवल ये कहूंगा कि राष्ट्रीय शिक्षा किसी और दिन स्वयं जी केवल राष्ट्रीय शिक्षा नीति पर ही हम लोग पूरा एक डेढ़ घंटे का 
बहस करेंगे और क्योंकि वो दोनों तरह से प्रभावित करने जा रहा है पूरे के पूरे टीचर एजुकेशन बदलने जा रहा है इंटेग्रेटेड टीचर एजुकेशन प्रोग्राम फोर इयर्स का आ गया है और सौ महाविद्यालयों को हम देने जा रहे हैं ये पहले साल में उसको हम लोग टेस्ट करेंगे और उसके बाद उसको लार्ज स्केल में पूरे देश में चलाएंगे हमको किसी और किसी ने बताया जब आपका पोस्टर आया था और हमने अपने स्टेटस में लगाया तो किसी ने हमें फोन करके कहा कि सर ये बहुत ही अच्छा कॉलेज है झारखंड का तो आप आएंगे क्या हमने कहा हम आ तो नहीं रहे हैं ऑनलाइन जुड़ रहे हैं तो मेरा सौभाग्य है कि आप लोगों से बात कर रहे हैं और जब मैं रांची आता हूं तो आपके यहाँ आऊंगा भी आप निश्चित तौर पर एक चीज है कि पूरे नीति को ध्यान से पढ़िए अगर पूरी नीति नहीं भी पढ़ते हैं एटलीस्ट स्कूल एजुकेशन का जो पहला पार्ट है उसको पढ़िए ये स्कूल एजुकेशन को कंप्लीटली ट्रांसफॉर्म करने जा रहा है स्कूल एजुकेशन में क्या तीन बड़ी चीजें हैं पहला है सिस्टम वो हम बदल रहे हैं पहले हम छह साल से पंद्रह साल अठारह साल के बच्चों को पढ़ाते थे बारह साल का स्कूली एजुकेशन था ये अब पंद्रह साल होगा सबसे बड़ी बड़ी मुश्किल थी कि जो तीन से छह साल का बच्चा होता है वो विद्यालय के बाहर था वो सीखता नहीं था अब तो तो जो पहला पहला अंतर पड़ेगा कि सारे बच्चे स्कूल में होंगे और तीन साल की उम्र से होंगे अभी केवल अमीरों के बच्चे प्ले स्कूल में होते हैं डे केयर सेंटर में होते हैं अब गरीबों के भी बच्चे होंगे वहां पर इसलिए सभी बच्चों को एक जैसा ट्रीटमेंट मिलेगा दूसरा बदलाव आएगा कि अगर कोई बच्चा खेती में इंटरेस्ट रखता है एग्रीकल्चर में इंटरेस्ट रखता है म्यूजिक में इंटरेस्ट रखता है कोई लड़का डांस करना चाहता है मैं जान बुझके लड़की नहीं कह रहा हूं कोई लड़का डांस करना चाहता है तो वो भी कर सकता है उसके लिए भी क्रेडिट करें क्या अंतर पड़ेगा आप सोचेंगे कि ये क्यों किया गया हम हमेशा ये कहते हैं कि हम 140 करोड़ के देश हैं और हमको 50 मेडल भी नहीं आता है ओलंपिक में क्यों नहीं आता है हमने सभी बच्चों को केवल विद्यालय में रख दिया जो मैकॉले चाहता था कि केवल अंग्रेजी पढ़ो अंग्रेजों की सेवा करो और अंग्रेजी शासन को इस देश में बचाओ यह खत्म होगा हमारे बच्चे जो चौसठ कलाओं की बात थी हमारे देश में उन सभी कलाओं में बेहतर बनेंगे एक अच्छा डांसर बनाना उतना ही जरूरी है जितना कि एक साइंटिस्ट बनाना जरूरी है इसलिए हम उन सभी कलाओं को जीवंत करना चाहते हैं एक चीज और आप लोगों को बताएं समय कम है लेकिन हम कुछ सारी चीजें धीरे जल्दी जल्दी बोल देना चाहते हैं हमारे देश में खिलौनों का एक बड़ा कल्चर था आप पाएंगे कि हर राज्य में हर जिला का अपना खिलौना होता था वो मर गया हम चीन से अब करोड़ों करोड़ का खिलौना मंगाते हैं हम जो पूर्व विद्यालय शिक्षा तैयार करने जा रहे हैं अर्ली चाइल्डहुड एजुकेशन के स्कूल्स उनको हम अपने बनाए हुए खिलौने देश भर में सप्लाई करेंगे और उन खिलौनों से हमारे बच्चे पढ़ेंगे खेलेंगे सीखेंगे पढ़ेंगे नहीं खेलेंगे और सीखेंगे क्योंकि तीन से आठ साल को पढ़ाने की जरूरत नहीं है उनमें वो साइंटिफिक टेम्पर बनाने की जरूरत है उनको लर्निंग टू लर्न सिखाने की जरूरत है वो खिलौने से खेले और पूछे कि ये ऐसा क्यों होता है ये खिलौना ऐसा क्यों है ये बड़ा ही सोचा समझा हुआ एक पॉलिसी बनाया गया है और ये अगर अनुमान ना कहें बिल्कुल विश्वास है हम लोगों का कि 2030 तक मैक्सिमम 15 तक कंप्लीट स्कूल एजुकेशन को ट्रांसफॉर्म करेगा हमारे बच्चे बिल्कुल अलग निकलेंगे जो 2035 में 2022-23 में घुस रहे हैं 10-12 साल में जो निकलेंगे 15 साल में वो बिल्कुल अलग तरह के सोच वाले बच्चे निकलेंगे वो भारत के लिए सोचेंगे वो ये नहीं सोचेंगे कि हमको कैसे अच्छा कंप्यूटर पढ़ाई करके और अमेरिका पहुंचना है वो ये चाहेंगे कि हम अपने देश की सेवा करें लाखों लाख बच्चे बच्चियां 
एनएसएस में जाएंगे एनसीसी में जाएंगे एग्रीकल्चर में जाएंगे डांस में जाएंगे म्यूजिक में जाएंगे ताकि हमारे देश का बच्चा दुनिया का बेस्ट म्यूजिशियन बने डांसर्स बने फर्नीचर डिजाइनर बने जब वो छोटी कक्षा में होगा तो लकड़ी का काम करेगा बड़ी कक्षा में जाएगा तो फर्नीचर डिजाइन करेगा ये सोच है आज मैं बस इतना ही बोलूंगा अगर आपके प्रश्न कोई हो तो मैं लूंगा लेकिन मेरा ऐसा आज सिस्टम और टेक्नोलॉजी भी बहुत अच्छा नहीं चल रहा है मेरा ऐसा अनुमान है कि आप सब पॉलिसी को ठीक से पढ़ेंगे और उस पर बहस करेंगे चर्चा करेंगे और हम लोग उसको किसी दिन डिबेट करेंगे पूरी लेकिन आज अगर कोई प्रश्न है किसी भी एस्पेक्ट पर पॉलिसी के तो आप पूछ सकते हैं बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद बहुत बहुत आभार Yes, sir. Thank you, sir, for your valuable speech. Sir, there is one question. One student of uh, Shivam Sipathi is asking: Is it possible to have a uniform curriculum for all in the higher education system? It is neither possible nor it is said. Read the policy very carefully. Chapter nineteen says every college will have its own board of governors. That means the board of the the, the uh, board of governors will decide how the curriculum will be decided. The autonomy is also given. Every department will have its own board of studies, which will decide on the curriculum that we will have. However, in areas like teacher education, in areas where you have a national standard. that will be decided by the regulatory vertical of the higher education commission of india we are soon going to convert the university grant commission to the higher education commission of india and the higher education commission will have one vertical as regulatory vertical one as accreditation third as financing and fourth as the general council general council will decide on general national standard but every institution will uh, have autonomy to decide and to have 30% local content so it's not that we are trying to have one curriculum for the whole nation every institution will be autonomous and decide on its own board of studies yes sweta thank you sir so one more question is there by shivam tripathi nakale ki shiksha niti yadi band karna hai to bhartiya convent vidyalay mein kyu nahi band karne par vichar kiya jata hai dekhiye kisi ko band kyon kiya jaye aap itna acha kaam kare bachche un vidyalayon mein na jaye humne bahut acche vernacular medium ke vidyalay nahi banaye hindi medium तमिल मीडियम तेलुगु मीडियम हम इन भाषाओं को लेकर के झगड़ा ही करते थे और राजनीति होती थी हम अगर अच्छी शिक्षा नीति बना के विद्यालय बना पाएंगे तो अपने आप ही विद्यार्थी नहीं जाएंगे तो हम इस आप इस नीति से ये मत एक्सपेक्ट करिए कि ये कहीं भी नेगेटिव है ये हमेशा पॉजिटिव पॉलिसी है हम हर चीज को प्रमोट करना चाहते हैं और किसी को भी बंद नहीं करना चाहते हैं अच्छी हिंदी पढ़ हिंदी की शिक्षा अच्छी दी है ना जी जी अपने ही आप बच्चे नहीं जाएंगे जाएंगे थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सर फॉर नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन टू इस्माइल सर इस्माइल सर आर यू देयर यस यस आई एम यस so one uh, student Par paromita saha is asking that some teachers are not competent to handle the ict tool and they do not have a technical resource person in the school then how to solve this problem <laughs> okay uh, now is i think there is no reason why you cannot handle it because it's very simple and most of the you are talking about software you have all the help file if in my say in my uh, system i have a help file i have a video you know everything you just ask me how you do words let's say a simple uh, words 
you know, the, the uh, application, Microsoft Word. How you do it? I mean, learn it. You get help uh, get from the um, internet. You know, nowadays, it's very easy. So, um, I don't think there is a problem. You know, you must search for it because it's all quite simple. Nowadays. Unless you don't even know how to click the file, how to hold a mouse, how to put about. I think uh, basically all teachers, especially from the, um, uh, the, 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 the the college, they have been taught yet. <laughs> so, and I I request teachers who are not really nervous. As if you are a teacher, you can ask your children. They are very good. You know. How you use your app, how you use your handphones, you know. Uh, I mean, you don't need much, but all of them you can explore. Okay, so it's not really necessary to have one teacher uh, that is well versed in your school. But I'm sure in every school you have one person who are able to be and you can get help. From them. Yeah. yeah. So, thank you so much, sir. So one more question. Uh, one more question is there, sir. It's my sir. Yeah. yeah. One student, Shivam Sipathi, is asking how augmented reality and Web 3.0 helps in providing education for all. Okay. okay. If you are talking for all, that depends on the availability. I am not saying that for all that everybody can uh, get or, or I mean, Of course, that augmented reality. Uh, you have to, you know, learn, and you can also learn from the um, books or uh, from the YouTube, you know. But it gives a very um, better understanding of the lesson because when we talk about augmented reality, uh, it's um, visual reality. You are coming with 3D, you know, the life. You know, it comes life. You know, like what I'm saying that uh, it, the other one is the 7G holo holocaust. So all these are new technology that will uh, encourage the student or help the student to understand the subject. Uh, but um, yeah, of course, for the new thing you have to learn, and sometimes you can search from internet. Some organization like in my country, the university, the university, uh, sometimes they have a courses. You know, you have to attend. Uh, those are the, the new, new type of technology that you have to attend uh, the courses. So, so uh, benefit for all, yes, benefit for all in the sense of understanding of subject. But again, you know, because it's new, you need a very strong um, internet. And it may, uh, it may not be benefit for for all. Okay. Thank you, sir. Now, next question by Anuradha Yadav. What are the barriers to use ICT in education? Okay. There are a few more things. First, the most important is the attitude. <laughs> it's the attitude. It's the most barrier. If everything is there, but you think that I'm so lazy, cry, uh, nobody wants to help me. So, all these are attitudes that these great barriers to the education. I have an a, 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 a example of one teacher. She's a senior teacher. When she used my uh, application first, she's uh, very reluctant to use because she claimed that she's quite senior. She's not able to read. But the, the headmaster of the school, a very good headmaster, then said, you must learn slowly. You know, so once after three months, four months, all the teachers have to use it. Left only she's the one so she's quite shy to ask others so she calls me and i told her why not you learn from all my help after two weeks she's one of the best because i know that i was that reluctant to do it because of her attitude that is one actually of course there are like internet uh, you know the connectivity but i think india i've been to india i've been to Kolkata, i've been to a lot of cities uh, in the middle of the road i think all 4g can access so no problem at all of the connectivity i can see i went to travel, went to travel to some areas I went to west bengal uh, just can't i've been traveling i see that the connectivity is good you know 
uh, when I'm traveling from one place to one place, uh, I think it's no problem at all. So um, maybe, maybe, you know, in, in, in a short time, there will be an improvement. And I can see also in India, the part, the electricity, the power. You know, uh, I want one area that is uh, not stable, it's still school. Maybe that become a barrier. The connectivity, I don't think so. And the um, headphone, the, the equipment, I don't think so. But I'm sorry to say that some of the teachers, they prefer to use handphones, you know, rather than the laptops, you know. But the price is just the same. <laughs> so you can use it, but if you want to, like, uh, you want to do some program, you want to plan. It's uh, easier to use a uh, laptop instead of handphone or laptop or tablet. So I think there's not much concern about uh, uh, the barrier of using it. But the one is a knowledge and skill. But knowledge and skill, you can overcome it. You can overcome it, no problem. You can, you can, you can learn, you know, uh, anywhere you can learn. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Okay. Yeah, I can see uh, from Kumar Singh, yeah, asking me what ICT skill is the need teaching process. Okay, so it is just like it's just like um you want to learn something, you start with basic. You know, but you must continue it, continue it. I'm sure a young man like you, I can see you're still young. Huh? Uh, you, 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 you must have the patience. You know, first of all, you must know how to use all your basic activities. You no know, basic software, like Word, PowerPoint. You know, those are common enough for the start. You know, and then you learn how to create your video from YouTube. That is the second stage, how to integrate it. And then the third stage, how you are going to do your own YouTube. Now it's very easy. My time, last time, is what? Very difficult. But now, very easy. You know, you can do your own. And slowly, and slowly, develop it. A lot of software, like Google, all those are software. And then you can start with Google Classroom, you know. Uh, another one is like live machine. All those are, are platforms that you can put in your student uh, uh, assignment and they can interact. And also in my forum. Uh, so perhaps when I go there, if uh, you know Mrs. Swens uh, dream to bring me there, maybe we can share yeah, uh, my um, uh, what I call it um, program, my, my my tools, become your project, and you can say. How easy is it? And so don't worry, basic ICT learn slowly. Slowly. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, why ICT? Uh, we are learn we are living in the world of ICT. So this is, we are talking about the the the, the stages in our life. You know, in the first case, we don't have the phone. We don't have radio, we don't have TV. I was born in 1954. You know, my, my mother would carry me when I three years to go to the shop to listen to the radio. We don't have. It. And then TV would come to the station somewhere in 1969. And not many parents able to buy it until I'm uh, 14 years old. We don't have TVs at home. I used to go to the shop and watch TV at night. The Hindi movie and Malay movie. <laughs> so, uh, so, this is the thing, you know. Then we have the phone, big, you know, the traditional phone, and then uh, 1990s and 90s and mobiles, you know. So, we are moving from one stage to one stage. So, now we are in the information stage, information age. So, whether you like it or not, we have to go it in whether in education, in economics, you have all the banks. Internet banking, you have all your cards, uh, you do your commerce, e commerce. So you cannot run away from life, not only education. So if you can, you know, you can live in your e commerce, everything, why not in education? You are going to be the changes. You teachers are supposed to be the changes. So, uh, you know, that's the importance of uh, ICT in education. Thank you.
Thank you, sir. Yeah, this one more How can we put use ICT as positive manner? Of course. Uh, uh, first, I tell you, it's a, it's a, the mental. We say that ICT is part of our life. It's just like pen. It's just like our our handphone. You know, last time we we, we don't think when when we do payment in government office. We say that all the circulars will be sent to email. No more in the real papers. Everybody grumbles, start grumbling. So we have no time to be in computer. But now everything there. I'm sure you don't uh, touch your handphone, email, or WhatsApp. You feel it is not complete for you, right? So every time, even though you listen to your teacher lecturer, uh, uh, lecture also your hand behind your desk is your phone. You know because your phone is part of your life. To so make it ICT part of your life in addition. Yeah, anything else? So, next question to our Honorable uh, CB Sarma, sir. CB Sarma, are you here? How ICT can make different in teaching and learning process? Of course, of course, eh? ICT can make a different. Before I answer the question, I'll answer I ask you the question. How oh, ICT can change your life? <laughs> eh? How oh, ICT can change without your headphones, without your uh, all the WhatsApp? Eh? How you feel it? It's the same thing. Eh? It's ICT. When you change the learning, when students will get more involved, you can explain more easily. You can show them like average uh, people living in people living in, in other state, people, the life of the people in the mountain. You know, everything you can show them on your uh, uh, your screen. And you know the other one, that, like, like the seven holocaust, the new technology be coming in. You know, you can bring everything. You can bring the the, the, the elephant. You know, this is all the coming in. So, so that will be much easier. Life much easier. Easier to understand uh, the topic much in deeper. You know. Uh, those, those are the things that the importance of ICT in, in education. Thanks a lot, sir, for taking each one of the problems and, sol uh, and giving the solution. Thank you very much, sir. Now I would like to invite Miss Pooja, student, Grizzly College of Education, for vote of hands. Pooja, come. Over to you. Good afternoon to all of you. I am Pooja Kumari, present here for vote of thanks. First of all, I would like to give my hearty vote of thanks to our honorable keynote speaker, Professor P. V. Sarma, for gracing today's international webinar. Thank you, sir, for your very thought-provoking and interesting address. I would like to thank our distinguished speaker, Professor Ismail Jain, for making an excellent presentation and making this international webinar a very meaningful and interesting. I would like to express our deep gratitude to the Honorable Deputy Director, Dr. Sanjita Kumari, for her presence in this international webinar. I would like to thank all the distinguished principals, professors, teachers, students and participants all over the globe and thanks to organized team for grand successful of this international webinar. I would also thank our beloved secretary, Mr. Avinash Kumar Sage and chairman, Mr. Manish Kumar Kapsime for their guidance and moral support. I would like to give thanks to Honorable Principal Dr. B.C. Swam for giving opportunity for vote of thanks. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Pooja. A very immense thank you to you, sir.
Dr. Ismail sir. Really, your presence was gracious, and it was really very helpful for each one of us. We have learned a lot of things regarding ICT from you, and each one of the problems you have handled very nicely. Really, it was very useful. In today's 21st century, you have said that what, how much it is useful for for the for being a teacher. what role ict plays in our daily life thank you sir now i would now i would request all of you for national anthem please all of you be in attention position 3 2 1 start Yeah. 